a lot of folks within the uh, within the uh, industry we see that kind of the dichotomy today between those who would like you know closed source models and kind of foundation models that are centralized within certain actors um, to be essentially the de facto only available large language models that you see today. And you have others, uh, you know, such as Andrew Ng, Yann Lequin, um, that are discussing the need to accelerate open source AI and the development of AI. Um, maybe how do you see the argument um, play out, especially in the future, the risks associated with it? Um, and I'd love to see kind of your thinking around the, the trade-off between open source and, and closed source AI from a risk perspective. Well, there's risks and then there's agendas. And, you know, I've, I've worked in, in big tech and I've even, you know, been sort of a, a lobbyist, I guess, for some part of my life. So I understand how the temptation to frame your argument in terms of I'm trying to save humanity. That's a very big appeal to that argument, whether you are inside, you know, I was working as a regulator as well. People come to you from private sector seemingly wanting to save the world. It's very compelling. And, and on the other side, whether you are on the open source side of the argument or you are selling some sort of closed source product, if you take the higher road saying, you know, I'm thinking about everyone else, initially you are listened to, but then the proof's in the pudding. W were you thinking about anybody else and, uh, and everyone else? And maybe you were, right? And maybe these people are just picking this time. But what, what I'm saying, though, is you don't get to scream and cry wolf many times at least one actor that has cried wolf, you, now you used your card. So I think that they, the, the timing was interesting, and I think, the, you know, I think there were agendas there. They, they wanted to capture the regulatory process. They wanted to regulate now rather than in 10 years because their products are coming out now. I'm a big believer in openness in technology. So people who have followed my work know that I've worked on fostering open source and certainly interoperable technologies for 20 years, both inside and outside of government and private and, and, and startup companies, so all, all, all of the above. That doesn't mean that I think only open source technology is the solution. I think there's a trade-off here, and these federal federalized models where you are sharing an appropriate amount uh, without disclosing the underlying identity of the data, there's a value there as well. Now, do I worry about large data sets getting uh, lost or large data, data sets becoming monopolized by vendors? Yes, of course. That is a massive, massive issue. But, you know, I feel like every decade we worry about one thing. So, you know, last decade we worried about big data and who owns all this data. Well, then it turns out now I think we are in the decade of algorithms. There's like... Who has the right algorithms? You have the algorithm, you know, who cares about the data? You can even have crappy data because you have the best algorithm, so you're, you're going to win. And then, you know, we now are also starting to realize that our infrastructure is horrible, uh, that we're building all of this stuff on, so we want quantum because we want a new architecture, not silicon, to build our stuff on top of. Even though NVIDIA, you know, has come up with better chips, eventually we, we're going to need to escalate and, uh, you know, get like a thousand X on our efficiencies and we need different technologies. So, this obsession with individual pieces of, call it AI or digital platforms, is always wrong-headed. Um, so, so I think, yes, I, I obsess over openness in data, but I think openness in algorithm and openness and transparency all across is important. And this is, in fact, how we created our legal system, right, to protect IPRs. We said patents and stuff, they all need to be open. Everybody needs to understand that, that doesn't mean you know, in terms of patents, you know, when, when those were valuable, which is a long time ago, um, in, in, and mostly in the non-digital uh, space, you know, they were useful because people could see what was happening. They obviously still have to pay the patent owner. Now, in the digital sphere, it works very differently. Patents are not so useful at all. But that doesn't mean that you can't claim ownership and get benefits from having developed technologies. So I think we need to rethink how all these things work. They're not going to work in one way for 30 years. We have to be adaptive. We have to allow different licensing models for technology. We have to be aware that if we uh, adopt viral licensing, uh, you know, all across the world, that does tamper with relationships between technologies that we may not be prepared to do. So it's not as simple as, you know, adopting one viral license for all, uh, you know, for all technology either, right? That would 
uh, at least be something we need to prepare for. So I think, you know, getting out of this myopic space that, you know, everything now has to be open or everything should be closed because then innovators can innovate, neither is correct. 